Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are mastering the measure tool again. We're once again looking at uh, bar lines today. And uh, I thought I'd do a little video on how to deal with independent bar lines. Um, as you may be aware by now, the way that Finale handles measures is uh, kind of unique in that, uh, you know, Finale looks at measures as frames. And, uh, you know, the, the bar lines will go um, vertical from the top to the bottom of this score, sort of no matter uh, what you do. It's just the way that Finale thinks about this. Even if there isn't a bar line showing, you know, Finale's con there is a bar line that Finale considers at the end of the frame. Um, so this sort of causes a little bit of issues if you're doing unique things like trying to put different bar lines uh, at the end of different measures or if you're trying to do uh, what I would call staggered bar lines for something like this, which I'm going to show you later. Uh, this is in this other file where you have a 3-4 versus a 4-4 situation. And uh, you got to figure out how to put those bar lines in, in the quote-unquote wrong place, according to Finale. Um, so there's some tricks to this, and I, I just want to kind of walk you through sort of the concept of, of what can be done here. Now, there is a little bit of flexibility uh, with the use of the group bar line. As we know, the... Um, you know, the groups can have their own alternate group bar line. I think I showed you this a couple of videos ago. Um, so it is possible for the piano part, uh, for example, to just choose the dashed bar line. And what you'll get is essentially independent bar lines between the piano group and the rest of the score. Now, this is a little bit universal in the sense that um, once you do this, you're always going to get dashed bar lines here and always normal bar lines here, except for the fact that you can... Um, if you want, you can do something with, uh, you know, the bar line in measure one, choose double and not override the group bar line here. So in this case, you could get a double bar line, uh, with a dashed bar line here. Uh, of course, normally the double bar line will override the group bar line, in which case you'd get a double bar line in both cases. So it is a little bit flexible. What you can't do from here is say, you know, change this bar line here, uh, in the second bar for for the piano back to a normal bar line because there's no way to um, set the group bar line for for one bar. Um, I suppose you could actually, I mean, it would get a little complicated to do this, but you could actually uh, split the groups up. You know, the groups are actually sort of set, um, you know, all measures, but you could do measures one through one, and then in bar two, create a new group using a different alternate group bar line. I mean, it is possible to do that. It's a, as you can imagine, it gets a little bit tedious to do that, though. So, um, th those are some options uh, with that. Now, this will, of course, not have any effect on the bar lines uh, you know, in the rest of the score. So, if I wanted my, you know, soprano, alto, and tenor bass to have separate bar lines here, that this is not going to work. So, for me, I think it's a little bit better to use. Um, to fake it with expressions. And uh, there's a little bit more flexibility uh, with that. So I just want to kind of show you um, how this can be done. Now, the main trick to this is that really what you want to do is hide the bar lines in whatever staff you want these independent bar lines to appear. And we can hide bar lines with the staff attributes window either by um, doing, you know, unchecking bar lines here, and this will hide it globally for the horn part in this case. Um, or we could apply a staff style just to a couple bars here. I actually have one set up already that's uh, for hide bar lines. And you would only hide that one or those two bar lines in this case. Um, so it depends on the scope of what you need to be doing uh, with these independent bar lines. If it's, uh, if it's something that's, you know, uh, for the whole piece, then I, you know, best thing to do is uh, do something with the staff uh, attributes here and uncheck the bar lines, but it can be done a little bit more locally if you need to. But anyway, so I've got the uh, staff attributes set to hide that bar line for the horn part. So we can start looking at how to do this with the expression tool. Now in the expression tool with the default document in Finale, in the miscellaneous category, we do have one, two, three, four uh, elements here. The rest of these I've added, and I'll show you what these are in a second. But the number seven, eight, nine, and 10 in the miscellaneous category exist already. And what these are, are they're bar lines that you can add. And uh, these particular bar lines, the way that they're set up, if you look at the positioning, 
is um, the Justification Center horizontal click position staff reference line is zero, which means that it's going to um, pin it to the top uh, staff line. Um, but again, it's horizontal click position. So these bar lines are going to go wherever you happen to click in the measure, which can be anywhere. Uh, as you can see, I just randomly put it there, but you could basically put it, you know, wherever you click, that's where that uh, bar line is going to go. And of course, you can always move it around. So, you know, it, it's really easy to do this. And, uh, you know, Finale sets those up for you automatically. You have a regular bar line, you have a dashed bar line, you have a solid bar line, and you have a uh, final bar line. So again, these can be moved anywhere you want. Do be careful, though, you know, you can move them out of the staff, which can be a problem. So if you are going to move them, best to hold down shift. Uh, so you're constraining the dragging left or right. Now, these are kind of handy to basically draw them, you know, at will. However, what I have done is I've created another set of them. So one, two, three, four, five, which are literally just, oops, literally just duplicates of these bar lines, except I've changed the position in a very specific way. And I want to show you exactly what I did here. So this bar line here, this is the regular bar line. I've set the position. I call this right bar line positioning. It's basically the same shape, although actually, you know, it's weird the way expressions do this. When you duplicate expressions that are shapes, it will actually also duplicate the shape in the uh, shape selection dialog box. So technically, this is a unique shape. Uh, the, the expression number 14 here is a unique shape versus uh, number 7, just FYI. Uh, but getting back to what I was talking about with the positioning, uh, so what I've done is I've done right justification, right bar line, and these additional horizontal offsets are kind of important. Uh, I've set these up very specifically in this file, and they will line up exactly with the the bar line, the normal bar line. So, uh, and this is the default document again. So, if you have different settings for different things, these values may be different. But for the normal bar line, it's right justified, right bar line. Point uh, zero one seven three six is the value here. All right, so that's that normal bar line, and when I put it in. You'll see it doesn't matter where I click in this bar. It will always put it on the right bar line. And if I zoom in really close, you'll see that this right bar line is directly lined up with a normal bar line, right? So that's a good thing. Um, so I've got this normal bar line here. And I've got another one that's, uh, again, it's another duplicate of this. Uh, I'm calling this right bar line positioning for a double bar. And the only thing I've done is changed the uh, horizontal offset position here to 0 0.06, essentially. Um, so if you do another one with 0 0.06 as the uh, offset, what you'll be able to do is get a double bar line. So the way I'm doing this, I don't, didn't really have to do it this way, but I've done a double bar line as two separate items, uh, just the regular bar line plus the normal double bar. And you'll see that if I actually change the bar line for this measure, uh, to the double bar line that these double bar lines will um, uh, appear to match up. So that's the idea. We want them to to sort of match up where they're supposed to go. Um, okay, so that's the offsets for those. The dashed bar line is going to have the same offset as the uh, regular bar line. So right justified right bar line, 0 0.017. Okay, and you'll get your dashed bar line. The solid bar line, what is my setting here? The, uh, again, it's same justification horizontal alignment, but the uh, additional offset is 0 0.0625 uh, here. And that will give you a solid bar line that will line up with a solid bar line, if I were to add one there. And finally, the final bar line here, uh, with my positioning of uh, horizontal offset of 0 0.09. That's the, uh, the key number there. And when you do that, you'll get that final bar line. And once again, if I change the actual bar line here to a final bar line, you'll see that it will line up exactly correctly. So those positioning options are very important if you want to sort of preserve this uh, consistency between where these bar lines actually go. All right. So with this set up like this, you know, essentially what you could do, if you really wanted to, if you really needed to, uh, you could, again, just kind of go into your um, uh, staff attributes and just uncheck bar line for a couple of these guys. And you can, you know, you can have completely different bar lines for, um, uh, for different instruments. So I've got a dashed, I've got a 
thick. I've got a final one here. Uh, again, you know, I'm not, I don't know the applications of these precisely, but I imagine that uh, in some modern types of music, it would be handy to have um, something set up like this. So, all right, so that's sort of um, how to set up the bar lines to appear um, at the end of the bar so that you can actually, you know, literally have independent bar lines for different, uh, different instruments. Now, the one little strange caveat about this is that this is a little bit trickier when you're drawing bar lines on groups like this piano staff. So let's just go in here and uh, hide bar lines for staff for these two piano staffs here. And uh, th the problem here is that, you know, obviously when you put in one of these bar lines that I created, it's only going to put it on the first staff. I can put one down here, but, you know, you're not going to get a connecting bar line. You can actually stretch these shapes in the score. If you double click the handle there, you get a second handle here and you can grab this one and stretch it downward. So you could theoretically just kind of connect it like that. The problem is when you make these types of adjustments with expressions within the score, you actually permanently alter the shape of that expression. And you won't notice it until you do a redraw here. And what you'll see is that now I've extended that line this far from the top of the top staff. And again, I had another one here, so it extended that line to from the top of the uh, bottom staff there. So this is completely uh, incorrect. It's not, it's not a good way to do this. So if you're going to do it here, what you have to do is, again, duplicate these and uh, use the, the new one, again, because when you duplicate a, an, an expression that's a shape, you're also duplicating the shape. The problem is that when you actually start stretching these shapes within the score, you're permanently altered, altering the shape in the shape designer. That's what's going on. So technically, you could actually just take this one now, which is a unique one, uh, and uh, stretch it out. Now, again, if I use the original one that I had created, I'll, I'll still have that short one. But when I use the uh, extended one, you'll see that you get the extended one. <laughs> Again, the problem with this is that if you ever go, if you ever have to move the spacing between the staffs, um, you'll see that those uh, those bar lines are kind of set there. They're not going to, you know, shrink and, and expand with the uh, the space that you're moving the, the piano part. So, again, it's not ideal. It, it, it gets a little clunky like this, but uh, it is possible to do. Um, my recommendation is if you do need to do something like this, make sure that the the groups as much as possible have the bar lines that you need and uh, use the independent bar lines for um, uh, instruments that, that are not part of a group, if that makes sense. Now, I wanted to show you one other uh, trick to this because what I have here is a, I have a file set up that, and my intention was to have a 3-4 uh, part for the clarinet where everybody else is playing in 4-4 four, four, where the, f the, uh, the quarter notes all line up. Now, as you may be aware, um, Finale does not make this easy because, you know, you have to do this as an independent time signature, first of all. So the staff attributes for the clarinet does have an independent time signature. But if I were to just choose a regular 3-4, what you're actually going to get is three quarter notes that span the whole width of this frame. So essentially you're getting a 3 over 4 type of situation, which is not what I wanted. I want the bar lines to offset, but I want the quarter notes to line up. This is sort of a flaw with the way that Finale, it's not a flaw, it's just a choice that Finale made with these independent time signatures. Um, so the way that this 3-4 bar is actually set up is it's really a 4-4 four, four bar set with uh, more options, use a different time signature for display as 3-4. So I'm sort of tricking Finale into, you know, thinking that, th I'm tricking Finale to show a 3-4 bar here, but these are actually 4-4 four, four measures as far as Finale is concerned. Um, so what I can do is I can use those independent bar lines um, to create uh, bar lines, uh, you know, every three beats. Now what I've done in this file in particular uh, is unique because I've taken that original one, and I, you know, again, I could have just duplicated this, but I've taken that original one and created a slightly different positioning for it. Um, or I haven't done that yet, but I will show you in a second. So you'll see that the positioning is horizontal click position, which means again that uh, wherever I click, that's where it's going to put it. And that's not 100% ideal because you have to get it exactly right. And, uh, you know, you're sort of guessing, is that the right amount of space before the note and here and everything? But there is a setting uh, in Finale that puts a space between the bar line and the first note. And um, I believe that this is in the, let's see, notes and rest 
pane of the document options, you can see spacing before music is 0.11111. Um, and again, that's just putting the, the, the quarter note 0.111 uh, value away from the bar line. So what we can do is actually kind of tricky here. Um, I'm going to change the position of this. Instead of being horizontal click position, I'm going to choose left of all note heads. Okay. Again, I'm going to right justify this. And uh, I'm going to put a value here of negative 0.11111. Okay, can you kind of see where I'm going with this? Now, when I assign that, whatever beat I assign that to, that bar line is going to go before it, the exact right amount of space that it would normally go in the file that I have for uh, each, um, uh, for the beginning of the measure. So you can kind of see what's going on here. Now I've got that, uh, that bar line perfectly in place in that, uh, after that third beat, and I can do it here. Uh, and I can just kind of go on every three beats and do it like this. Here's another one. Um, and actually what I could do here, because I, I, let me just set something up because I think this is kind of clever. Um, you know, if you're going to do something like this, maybe instead of this um, particular uh, bar line here, maybe it might be a good idea to do a, a thick bar line that's on the right bar line positioning, right? So this way we're indicating to the clarinet player that finally the uh, the bar lines match up between the rest of the score. Uh, and even actually what I could do, again, is take the, you know, maybe the right bar line positioning uh, dotted um, uh, bar line here, just so that he can also see, the clarinet player can also see exactly where the... Um, the four four measures line up really in relation so that's i mean that's a p another possibility there you can kind of see um the flexibility of this and that might be a little bit too I, I don't know if i'd actually do this this might be a little bit too uh too um uh, uh messy i guess but uh it, it's an option to do that if you want and then the cool thing is is that once you have you know a setup like this so uh, really all i need is one two three four bar lines in this particular situation, I can always use the filter here, edit filter, and filter for um, expressions. Uh, you know, this is all in the miscellaneous category, so you really just need this one option here. And what you can really do is, you know, you're copying three bars essentially, so just copy those three bars uh, after that thick bar line. And you can even do this on empty measures, as you can see there, etc. Now, you know, this does get a little bit wonky when you start dealing with uh, rests in the part, as you can see here, because again, finale is considering the um, you know the the clarinet part is in four four as far as finale is concerned. Even though you're sort of tricking finale into in doing three four, it'll cause all kinds of problems with uh, multi measure rests. I mean, there's just no way, there's no perfect way to do this exactly, but um, you know you can kind of set up your score to look correctly and maybe even. You know, if you want, you can take the staff attributes and for the clarinet and uncheck display rests and empty measures. So at least you're just sort of not showing anything here, which will help the, the, the look and the score a little bit better. Honestly, if I were doing something like this, this would totally be a case where I would probably um, extract the clarinet part and put them, you know, put it in real 3-4 measures as opposed to this sort of fake 4-4 four, four showing as 3-4. This is an instance where actually extracting the part into a separate file uh, would be of benefit here. But um, but anyway, I've been talking for a while. I, I hope that you kind of are, are now sort of understand the concept of this. Basically, what you're doing is, is setting up these bar lines. Again, it's all about the positioning. If the positioning is good, um, then you're, you're doing less fiddling with things. You're, you're not necessarily, you know, you, you don't have to fiddle with where the, the, the bar line position is if you set the position up correctly the first time. So, you know, that's the premise of it. All right, so I hope this has helped. This has uh, been uh, faking independent bar lines, if you will. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, come back soon, and we'll start looking at some other aspects of the measure tool in Finale. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon on the next video.